So I'm going to keep this basic, not too heavy. My, my hope is that this uh, starts conversation. So while I'm going, if you have a question, just raise your hand and let's talk about it at that time. Okay, so if I'm up here and I just talk and go through my slides, I have failed because I would love to have a back and forth. That's my goal. So help me achieve my goal. So, you know, you may ask, yo, Barb, what have you been up to? I've been a little busy. I did some things over the past year that I'm very proud and happy of. So, I got married. <laughs> that was in December. Now I'm Dr. Taylor. I graduated. I'm still working out. <laughs> and I have a little friend now. This is Louie. Louis, is that the goat? Yes, it's a, he's a little thing, but he's nine pounds in parasite. So I've had a busy year. Started a new career, and I did all these things. But I, I have not stopped thinking about, practicing, and, and just being very present in the marketplace for ideas, which is what we're doing here today. I do have a disclaimer to make. Nothing in this presentation should be considered as financial advice. Staking with Numeraire is meant to be an indicator of your confidence in your machine learning model. Participants may lose Numeraire staked in the tournaments. Do your own research before obtaining Numeraire. I have another one, sorry. I've this is the, the nature of, of my employer. Uh, this presentation reflects my views, Dr. John Taylor's views. They do not reflect the opinions of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and definitely not the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. Okay? So just me, not them. So I love this quote. An approximate answer to the right problem is worth a good deal more than an exact answer to an approximate problem. This is two pieces of quote. So what are we trying to do? Well, I think we're giving an approximate answer to the right problem. What, what is that problem that we're working on, folks? In a, in a big way. More specifically, what, what is the problem we're solving? allocate assets or making predictions on the stock market which is effectively the same thing yeah where do we, where do we put our money so that we can make return and, and so that is a actually it's a precise question that we're asking of our models you know, where, where can we get positive return over time and we do this you know but how, how do we even judge these models so we're, we're, it's linear regression in the end everything that we look at in finance is is, is linear and it's in its design. Are there nonlinear relationships? Yes. But at the end of the day, we boil down into a linear problem. It's zeros and ones in a time series. That's what we're evaluating. Right? Well, so today I want to talk about what is linear regression. I think it's very helpful still to review these things. How do we evaluate the output of a regression model? And then I have some tips and tricks to share. That's really why you're here. So I want to pay, pay you back for coming today, and that's how I want to Okay. So you're going to be familiar with the basics of linear regression in a machine learning set. So what is linear regression? Well, here it is. You're going to put a trend line across some data. Is the y-axis linearly related to the x-axis? Yes. The slope, 0.6, times the observed value of x, at a given point is approximately equal to the y-axis, plus some constant. It's not magic, it's just math. Correlation matters though, right? Correlation is just a straight line, all the dots line up. 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0, 0.0. That seems to look pretty familiar to me. That looks like the performance of my early models. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to do this. That's very bad. But what you know, I just talked about is linear. Are any of these relationships linear? Why? Why? Or even functions. Correlation. 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 
correlations are zero. There's no linear relationship that exists. So it probably are drawn by some mathematical function, but it's not, it's a non-linear relation. Thus correlation is zero. If your model output looks like this, please stop. <laughs> This is more what, what I look at. And actually, this comes from my dissertation. We have some factors. This is the same. Okay, folks? Just because it's not stock market data doesn't mean that it's not the same kind of question. These are variables that are related to bank performance and bank risk. My dissertation was on predicting bank failures. So I found factors that explain bank failures. Statistical significance matters, right? The ones that are highlighted have three star significance, which is significant at 0 0.01 level of output. We know what's significant ahead of time. We can let an algorithm figure it out for us, right? That's what a linear fit does. It says these factors explain the relation between x and y. That's what machine learning is doing for us. One variable, more than one variable, can be associated with a change in the dependent variable. That's what you see here. Now, do we have any multicollinearity problems? Can you identify that without running some kind of analysis? I'm going to open your brain. I'm going to make you think. It's going to happen. I know it's late in the day, so it's probably unfair to make you think at this point. But we're going to. You know, 15 months ago, I was still in a college classroom beating up the undergrads. Would the coefficients carry a similar sign? Would you say they're correlated? Likely, yes. It's a safe, it's a safe assumption to work with. And, and you'll see that in your models, too. If you pull a factor analysis, you're, you're going to find that one is significant, and they're, and they're similar in their significance. You're going to, they're generally pretty highly correlated. But, you know, in the literature, we talk about the in-sample goodness of fit, right? And generally, we would say, okay, great. I have a R-squared of 0.87. I can explain 87% of the variance. Oh, that's pretty good, right? AIC, the f stat, right? Is the actual regression statistics significant in and of itself? But I'm not so concerned about its in-sample performance. As we know, we can all overfit. It's not really doing us any good. How does it do on unseen data? How do we do that? Out of sample, well, we can still use four fish. We can look at log loss if it's a binary dependent variable. ROC, AUC curves. But what are we talking about with in-sample and out of sample? Right. If you have enough data, you can hold out some of your data to evaluate how your model performs out of sample. There's been a lot of talk about synthetic data generation. I think that's a terrible idea. I do. The data is noisy enough already. Why would you add more noise? I, I don't understand that concept. It, it befuddles me greatly. But generally, we take data. We have a whole data set that you do. It's provided to us, right? We have test data, which again is still provided to us. We hold that out and then train on something, evaluate it on the test data. But notice we're not training on the test data. It's a bad practice. We won't be able to do any out of sample validation. We would have to put your model up for evaluation over a very long time period to see if, if, if you have anything good. That's why it's important when you sit down to start a new model that you think about how am I going to evaluate this model over time. Right? So when I developed the model, I said, okay, I only use the training data, and I'm going to set this model in AWS and let it go. I also want to see if I take the same model and train it on test and training if it's better or not. So in that case, now I'm evaluating two models constructed the same way, same input data, but more training opportunities. I just can't evaluate the sample performance. So I have to run them in parallel so that I can then see what the benefit or detraction is in performance. So you had a hundred observations. So yeah, basically what it is. You know, sometimes I just get ahead of myself. And so 
you'll see I'll, 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 I'll say what's in the slide ahead because I can't wait to say it, I'm excited to present. This is one of those examples. Right, so if your model is very good, the difference is zero. Always explore your data set before you run any models. Do you, is that necessarily a problem with the provided data? Missing values, I guess. Anybody graph the data before they start running the machine learning models? Well, with clean data that were provided for the regular tournament, it's not necessarily beneficial. For signals tournament, it's essential. Signals has by far the greatest ramp to production of, of, of anything that, that I've seen in machine learning competitions. So definitely do that for signals. But if you have never looked at the training data before, it is still helpful to understand how the data is shaped some relationships between factors and things like that. It could inform your research going forward. 